Hey guys, welcome to the Yellow Shirts podcast about sports. I am Andrea and I have with me Anna Lisa. And today's topic is extreme sports. And my first one is sky jumping. This is a competitive skiing event in which the contestants are going down a steep ramp that curves upward at the end and trying to cover as much horizontal distance in the air as possible. It started to be an Olympic event in 1924 in France. And what's interesting about it is that before jumping off the platform, the jumper sits down in a crutch position. Going down that ramp, it gets up to 100 kilometers per hour until he reaches the takeoff. And then once in the air, the competitors can rely only on their body position to maximize their jump, but also to have a safe plan. For me, this is one extreme sport as you basically throw yourself in the air and flying about 200 meters with no support in yourself and your skills. What about you, Anna? What do you have? Here's a sport, of course, is surf because I love and I like it. It's dangerous for too many reasons and it's what makes extreme. The fact is you are riding on a non-man-made environment and the water is unpredictable, uncontrollable and it's like make your experience so difficult because you don't know what you're gonna find. Dangerous surfing offers such as hiding people, hiding yourself, bailing in on a reef or find a shark or something like that. And have to make too many skills to the person for practice because you need that determination and you need body prepare for support be into the water. It's like a trick if you don't have the control of your body is complicated to practice. Also it's a good sport to practice if you're beginner in a easy beach when you have a small wave but if in the case example like if you are in Nazareth Portugal they have the most bigger wave in the world it's 100 feet also the change is like 30 meters this year also next year because it's in Tokyo 2020 when it's the first time you can see surf in Olympic Games. My second sport is still on the ice part, is ice climbing. This is, looks a lot like the rock climbing, but of course it's on ice. For years, it was just another part of the rock climbing and other mountaineering events. Whenever the climbers would have reached the icy section of the mountain, they would just have to traverse it and to continue to go upward. But eventually, the thrill and the excitement of climbing on ice, it gained popularity, and so it became like a separate sport. What is popular about it is going through glaciers and frozen waterfalls. A lot of versatile climbers are practicing the mixed climbing that involves ice, rock and snow climbing. I've chosen this because of the negative temperatures at which you are basically practicing while you are outside. And, and you can be outside for a lot of time, so you need to equipment but also a body resistance. And you depend a lot on the weather and on the wind. They might not always be your friends. Really extreme because with a tiny error, your life can end in, in a second if you don't pay attention. I think if, if I'm in a mountain, it's complicated. To I'm being iron. I can't imagine on ice. My second one is rafting. I choose because I like too much water and being in the water. And rafting is a competitive sport which the objective is to navigate downstream on a river, rapids river, using an inflight raft. It's considered a stream sport which highly challenged and are the rivers. And also it's a recreative team work because there are six people in inflate. And it's also extremely popular. Right now it always depends about the river. The difficult to depend on the scale of the river. Start in class 1 is the most easier and finish on class 6 is the most difficult and you have to be so professional to control and dominate the river. One of the most difficult like classic rapid or river is Niagara River in New York. The name is Whirlpool Rapid and it's the most famous competition is there because of like classificate the most professional people go there to have a competition track. Well, my my third one is still somehow connected to the sky, the wingsuit flying. This is a very skydiving and in this sport a person will fly in the air using a special jumpsuit which is called the wingsuit. It has two arm wings and a leg wing, inflatable and pressurized inside so you can basically create an air tampon when you go down and you need to use your body to control the direction and speed and the lift up. Usually at the end you do have a parachute so that's good but it should be a parachute designed for skydiving or base jumping. I found some records about this sport. The fastest flight record is with 363 kilometers per hour. So the longest and the highest time took nine minutes and six seconds. And the highest altitude from which anyone could jump so far was 11,358 meters. I chose this for the courage that you need to face down the wind, the high altitude, the, the potential of other weather conditions as you are descending freely and quite fast. And, and even if you have a parachute attached, it's still a lot of way down. Yeah, also my 
third one is a sky tool, relation with the sky. It's paragliding, also it's one of my favorites. It's a stream for which was born in the late 17s and it's a variation of a sky diving. In order of the sconch mount with a step slope. Initially, it was mainly used by climbers who were looking for an easy and simple way to go down from the top of the mountain. Paragliders are built in such a way that they are not to need a step slope for takeoff, just a slope painting and, and the wind was the same intensity most of the lakes between 10 and 25 km per hour. One of the most important things is the for the competitions, you just not go like in one way and Google first. It's also how many and um, how you make the maneuver or like the how you work and move with the paragraph. And also one of the most interesting things of this sport is was like Leonardo da Vinci designed the first paraguay and at the end the NASA was helping to, to this design to name Paraguay Glider and was in 1061 a French engineer named Pierre Lindor take the first step to continue a strategic placement to use these elements and also like it's important because you don't need to depend to be too high you just need the, the weight I have my fourth one, which is canyoning, yeah. which is basically transversing a canyon or a gorge by combining hiking, climbing, swimming, upselling, whatever it takes for you to be able to continue. It explores hard to reach areas of natural landscapes, basically follow a water route that carves through the rock formation. And while navigating, pass along the streams and the waterfall, you will just slide and jump and I don't know, descend to the gorge, often use technical equipment for safety, obviously. It's done primarily for the fun and to gain experience, but also for the difficulty, of course, challenges of the, the terrain if you're into more adventurous parts. The amount of water and the number of vertical obstacles are basically the factors in determining if a canyon is difficult or not for this level. Some of the harder and more technical stages of a canyon, like the rappels, and jumps can be modified or avoided if you are more a beginner or you can just avoid that area and make a specific route and the rush of jumping and diving into beautiful pools of water is incredible and it doesn't require a lot of advanced skills either yeah rappelling involves descending into more difficult areas with a significant use of the equipment but getting a bit in the water sport you see also the landscapes which are generally amazing in forest and rock combination still if you want to to be able to take a advantage of it at high level, let's say, you would need some techniques and specialized equipment so you can go down a strong water stream, of course, depending as well on the water conditions, but enjoying everything as it is. And my four is motocross. Actually, in the personal way, I am very afraid about practicing this kind of sport because I am afraid about motos. But it's a combination, in this case of motocross, it's a combination of motorcycle racing and cross-country racing. It's often also called Moto X or in X and it's a dirt bike racing sport which rides compete on off-road first, like gravel mode or grassy road. Motocross is not about the competing with other players since the road itself, exhibition, huge obstacle to beat. The sport evolved in the United Kingdom at the beginning of the 20th century from motorcycle trials competition. And actually now you can see competitions of motocross very specifically or also in the X Games, you can see too many ways or too many different categories of motocross you're with the obstacles or the way or with drugs and also different to are how you use the motocross. So I went a bit softer on my last one, which is parkour. And this is the practice of transversing obstacles in a man-made or natural environment through running, vaulting, jumping, climbing, rolling or whatever other movement that can help you move from one place to another. The the purpose is to reach from one point to another in the quickest and the most efficient way possible without using any equipment. So basically just your body and the object that you have around. The origins seem to be the physical education and training methods that they were developed in the years before the First World War and it was known as the natural method. The name of parkour came from the training where you could use as well obstacle courses called parkour du Copatan. The sport that we know nowadays was basically started in France in the late 
80s and was quite popularized afterwards through videos, television, documentaries, movies, including James Bond, the Casino Royale from 2006 has some scenes of uh, parkour scenes. I chose this because it's a non-conventional way of moving around the city. It's very eco-friendly at the same time. It involves a lot of movement and action, but also because some of the jumps tend to be at a very high level from buildings, from the rooftop, and the distance between the, the buildings are often not very small. You really need to secure on yourself, be able to, to do an extreme sport like this. You need to be a bit crazy, I would think. I find it really nice for, for me to watch people doing this. What about your last one? My last one is the slide line that refers to the act of walking, running or balancing along the suspended lane or flat wedding that is tensioned between two and third. Have a different type, but the most extreme is hiking in a slide line at elevation above the ground or water, also between mountains. Many slide liners consider a high lane to the pinnacles of the sport. Highlands are commonly set up location that have been used or are still used for Tyler and Traverser. When riding hike line, experienced slikers take measures to ensure the solid, renewed and equal state. The ensure I use it to secure the line into position. Of the best example of this sport is a typical act in the circle. They always use like wall and take attention of walk on the slide line. The most extreme now is like doing between a mountain so with too high a level with protection of their that hole for me. So these were our 10 extreme sports. For the next week we'll have an interviewing Sergio Rodino who is a young volleyball player. See you guys. See you.